Thank you. We're live. We're ready to go. Very good. Thank you. Good evening, folks. Um, to our March 10th, 2021 FY22 uh, budget hearing, uh, we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, justice for all. Wow. Just as a reminder, this meeting, uh, this hearing, I should say, is being recorded. In accordance with the rules of public forum as defined in Massachusetts Statute Chapter 30A, Section 20, and with Bridgewater Rangham School Committee Policy BEDHE, these are the guidelines we will follow for tonight's hearing. First, please note that this hearing is for informational purposes and the school committee will not vote on the budget as presented this evening. At the conclusion of the hearing, I will entertain a motion to take the budget as presented under advisement. At the regular school committee meeting scheduled for March 24th, uh, the FY22 uh, budget as presented will be considered and a vote will be taken at that time. For the purposes of tonight's hearing, our budget subcommittee chair, Dr. Prewindowski, uh, will present the FY22 budget proposal. We will then ask our superintendent, uh, Mr. Swenson, if he wishes to add anything to or comment on the presentation. Following that, I will entertain any questions and comments from members of the committee, followed by members of the public. In conference with the rules of public forum and our school committee policy, we request that any citizen wishing to speak before the committee, please email brrsdquestions at bridge-rain.org. And that email address will be shared on the screen as I speak um, and can also be found on tonight's agenda. Um, we ask that you include your name and address uh, so that we can call on you to expedite wait times and to allow those wishing to speak uh, to have ample opportunity. Um, I will call your name uh, when you're up to address the committee. We also respectfully request that each speaker limit themselves to three minutes, but I as the chair have the discretion to extend that if appropriate. In accordance with the rules, and with the permission of the chair, all citizens shall speak to the full committee through the chair and shall not address individual members or administrators. Any committee member may direct questions to any speaker through the chair in order to clarify the comments of the speaker. As a reminder, tonight is just about our FY22 budget. We will not take comments on anything other than our FY22 budget. With that, the Bridgewater Rainham Regional School District Committee's public hearing for the purpose of FY22 budget presentation is called to order. Dr. Grimandos. Thank you. Welcome to the 2021-2022 budget hearing presentation. My name is Susan Grimandowski, and the other members of the budget subcommittee are Mr. Tony Gelfi, Mrs. Lillian Holbrook, and Mr. Richie Florence. I would like to thank the Budget Subcommittee, our administration, Judy McDougall, and both town finance committees for all their hard work for this presentation. And our Bridgewater Rainham Regional School District mission statement is to provide excellence in education for all students in a safe learning environment. And we believe this budget demonstrates our commitment to the district's mission statement as well as addressing the budget concerns of our two towns. This budget also supports our student success plan. And we have the four pillars that we believe are involved in the student success plan, safe and supportive schools, curriculum and instruction, technology and facilities. We had some budget assumptions when we developed this budget. 
It was to develop a needs-based budget, support the planning for success model, provide consistent academically rigorous programs within the district, provide learner resources to support teaching and learning, and to meet contractual, retiree, regulatory, legal, and statutory obligations. Statutory, I'm sorry, obligations. Our budget cost drivers are, are similar every year. We have aging facilities and grounds, our technology, educational devices, as well as infrastructure, our curriculum supplies and materials, our contractual obligations, our retirement benefits, insurances, which include health, liability, property, and unemployment, our transportation, our general transportation, special education, and foster care, our special education tuition, as well as additional staffing. Our cost avoidance measures, we do collaborative bidding, collaborative contract negotiations with collective bargaining units, our in-house snow removal, our technology license programs, our in-district special education programs, our green initiatives, and our in-house license maintenance staff. And just one example of the in-house maintenance staff is COVID certainly put a huge emphasis on our HVAC system in the district. We will actually be eliminating our contract with an outside HVAC vendor and replacing it with our own HVAC licensed staff member. And this will be a savings to the district. After careful consideration of the superintendent budget proposal, combined with the two town budget expectations, the school committee budget will advocate for six positions for fiscal year 2022. And that will include a diversity, equity, inclusion coordinator, a coordinator of teaching and learning for our STEM position, which is our science, technology, engineering, and math. One speech and language pathologist, the HVAC technician, a records and data entry administrative assistant, and a school adjustment counselor for the Bridgewater Middle School, which will actually be located at the high school for the eighth grade. That will allow a adjustment counselor in all of our buildings. And when the new school opens, we anticipate that that adjustment counselor will come over to old high school. And this year, um, we are anticipating replacing a multi-use athletic field. This expense is approximately $460,000, and we will use the same 60-40 split. Uh, Rainham share would end up being approximately $184,133. Bridgewater's share would be $275,867 for total capital cost of $460,000, again, to replace the uh, turf field. And if we look at the budget section by section, you'll see that the administration cost, which is blue, represents 2% of the budget. And this is salaries and expenditures for the office of the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, business department, and our technology licenses. Instructional services, which is red, represents 6% of the budget, and that is our salaries for our principals, assistant principals, teachers, ESPs, guidance counselors, adjustment counselors, school psychologists, school secretaries, our proctors, librarians, substitutes, as well as our textbooks, school supplies, and technology. Other school services, which is brown, represents 11% of the budget, and that's salaries and expenditures for our nursing services, school resource officer, extracurricular and athletic programs, and transportation for regular and special ed. Operations and maintenance is green, and that is 8%, and that, all is, that is for all of our upkeep of our buildings, as well as custodial salaries and supplies. Fixed costs are gray at 18%, and that is expenses for health insurance for active and retired employees, unemployment benefits, building and liability insurance, workman's comp insurance, life insurance. 
and pension assessments. Programs with other schools is orange, and that's 5%, and that includes tuition for out-of-district placements, as well as charter schools and school choice students. And finally, you'll see we do have the 7,000 series is the asset allocation, that's the capital project, 460. So our final budget without debt is 77 million. $483,940 with the debt retirement and services of $5,403,300, no, $5,403,368 combined with the capital project for a total budget with debt of $83,347,308. And that brings us to our district revenues. We anticipate our miscellaneous receipts of $130,000, our user fees of $179,000. We will be putting in a million dollars of our E&D appropriation, which is our district savings account, and $45,000 for investments of funds for a total of $1,354,000. If you take that district revenue and you add it to the state revenue of $25,356,381, which is our Chapter 70 and Chapter 71 money, plus the town assessments of $50,733,559, you will come out with our budget without debt or capital of the $77,483,940. That 50 million plus um, will be broken down by the two towns. Rainham's portion will be $20,177,244. And Bridgewater's will be $30,596,315. And if you look on the, the slide, you'll see that we do this based on the enrollment of October 1st of the previous year, and you'll see that it's about a 60-40 split, uh, Rainham 40.03 and Bridgewater 59.97. And you'll see our budget timeline on March 24th. We will be adopting the FY22 budget at our regular March school committee meeting. In April, it will be certified by the district treasurer. On May 11th, we anticipate the town of Bridgewater voting, and on May 17th is the Rainham Town Meeting. Also, the Budget Subcommittee will be meeting again on March 15th at 4 o'clock, where we will look at any input that we receive tonight or over the next week and maybe adjust that accordingly. And finally, we like to thank you for the continued support, all our town officials, our taxpayers of the two towns, our school administration and the budget subcommittee, as well as the full school committee for all the help that we do to make our district wonderful. And that concludes our budget presentation. Thank you, Dr. Pewodowski, Mr. Thank you, Dr. Um, Just want to first of all, um, thank Everyone involved with the, the budget process. This begins back in October. And we begin to ask our building principals and our directors and managers to begin to make lists to advocate for their buildings and, and for their departments. And then we set up meetings with um, Ms. Macedo and I and start to put together what would be my preliminary budget that I present to all of you in January. And then once it becomes your budget, that's when the real work begins, and we start to meet uh, collectively uh, with our budget subcommittee. And I cannot thank our budget subcommittee enough for the endless hours that they put into this process. Um, we appreciate all of your efforts. I really, truly appreciate all of the efforts of the committee at large uh, for your continued advocacy uh, for uh, our children here within the district. <coughs> to um, thank our town officials as well, um, especially our members of FinCom from both sides of the district. 
our town uh, manager in Bridgewater, Mr. Michael Dutton, the business manager, Tony Salmonte, and the business, uh, sorry, the town administrator in um, Rain Ham, uh, Graham Waters, as well as our liaison to the um, budget uh, finance so subcommittee in Rain Ham, Linda Danello. I have to say, of all my years at central office, which is eight years, five years as the superintendent, this has been by far the most efficient <laughs> and um, productive uh, budget season. I think a lot goes along with that. I think over time we built trust uh, with our town officials. I think they understand that when we are advocating, we're advocating for our needs and needs-based budget. We also are very fiscally conservative once we receive these funds and make sure that all the monies that we do receive in terms of assessments or the capital projects are put towards what is in the best interest of our students and staff. So I cannot thank uh, the towns of Bridgewater and Raynham enough uh, for everything that they've done for us this year in a very obviously difficult year due to the pandemic. Uh, with COVID and um, for them to be able to um, bring us the information that they can support this budget at this time of the year um, is outstanding. I can't thank them enough. So um, again, I think that's a testament to all of you and to the towns that, that we have really built that trust over time in terms of our budget process. So thank you to all of you. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Uh, members of the committee, any questions? Over on the room. Mr. Marrera, I know you're on um, via Zoom. I don't know if you have anything. I just don't want to forget calling on you as well. So I do have one question if you want to get me out of the way. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to make sure I heard clarification from the superintendent. Are both towns in agreement with the current, current alignment? I mean, the current numbers as they stand? As of tonight? Yes, Mr. Moreira. We've had we've had ongoing meetings over the course of the last several weeks. Um, we've asked them not only for you know the percentage increase, but the actual dollar amounts that they feel comfortable with in terms of the assessment increase from FY21. Those are the numbers that are included in this budget. Um, we've also talked to them about capital expense. And they are comfortable as well uh, with the capital project of the field at high school. Okay, uh, if, if if that's if if that's factual, then that may be the first time that we may <laughs> end up approving a budget. You know, at the next meeting, that does not get um, cut down a little bit, and then we have to go back and see where we got to cut. So if that's if that's like I said, factual, then uh, you know, great job by the budget subcommittee and. And everybody, you know, who's put their efforts into this. So that, that, that's probably the first time, I'm, you know, that I've been on the committee that we've seen that happen. We've had, we had meetings right up until four o'clock today with both sides uh, of the district just to make sure I wasn't speaking out of turn when you asked that question, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you. That's all I have. Can I? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to add that for all those out there, we have not forgotten about the track or the tennis courts. And what we're going to hope to do going forward is to allocate resources towards these two projects um, using the capital money that the towns are going to be able to give us, as well as looking at our own E&D allotments so that we can whittle away at those big ticket items so that we can be sure that we get those done sooner rather than later. So I just wanted to say we have not forgotten about that. And we are going to work very diligently to get those projects done as soon as possible as well. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? Okay. okay. Members of the public, anybody you know? Okay. okay. If anyone wishes to speak, um, during this hearing, please virtually raise your hand, and um, I will ask Mr. Schultz to assist in uh,
I don't have anyone raising their hand. <laughs> I'll ask for any comment one more time. For a third time, I will ask for comment. Actually, be a person as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will now entertain a motion to take the budget under advisement. A motion by Mrs. King. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Hammond. This does require a roll call vote. Mr. Florence. Aye. Mr. Gelby. Aye. Mr. Hammond. Aye. Mrs. Holbrook. Aye. Mrs. King. Aye. Mr. Moreira. Aye. Dr. Premandowski. Aye. The chair votes aye. We have our budget to work on. Thank you all. Um, that concludes the hearing at um, 721 in the evening. Uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion by Mrs. Holbrook. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Hammond. This again requires a roll call vote. Mr. Florence. Aye. Mr. Gelby. Aye. Mr. Hammond. Aye. Mrs. Holbrook. Aye. Mrs. King. Aye. Mr. Marrera. Aye. Dr. Premandowski? Aye. The chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all for coming.